curved folds, I'm really talking about uh, wet folding. And so I'm taking a sponge and I really wrung it out well. And I'm just making both sides of the paper damp, not wet. I'm working on thick paper. Uh, in this case, a piece of cold press watercolor paper. And um, I'm going to be working on Reeves BFK also. And to the right, you can kind of see a warm-up piece that I worked on. But here I want to talk about the technique. So I'm using my hand as sort of a mold to carefully form a curve through the back of the paper. And the curvature of my hand through the wet paper, um, it kind of softly bends the paper and what you don't want to do is force it but just let it sort of naturally fold over the curve of your hand and then start pinching once it's sort of relaxed into a curve and then when we go to straighten out or turn the curve the other way don't be afraid to flip the paper around to whatever way feels natural your hand should feel natural in the way that you're going to lead the curve should feel natural. The more you force it, the more you're going to get wrinkles. So you don't want to force the paper. Uh, you want to let it sort of move naturally. And I'm not a master at this. Um, many origami masters do just a superb job of these curved folds. But I've learned this much. You don't want to struggle against the paper or force it. This is what I'm doing under the paper again. I'm letting the paper sort of rest over my hand and slowly pinching it after it's rested in a bent position. And don't forget to get playful with the shapes that you fold. Here's Reeves BFK. Printmakers know that this is an etching paper and it can sit in water for a long time. It doesn't wrinkle um, a lot. With the wet folding, uh, it's softer, but there's also less wrinkling. The kind of paper that you choose to work with is also going to affect the craftsmanship of the curved folds. Let's say we wanted to tear some curved deckled edges sort of like the outside edge is. Um, so I'm taking a paintbrush that doesn't hold a lot of water and I'm just wetting along that curved fold. And I let it soak in for a minute. And the curved fold has actually broken the surface tension. Um, and sometimes that releases uh, the sizing of the paper, and it makes it really easy to just uh, tear along that seam. And this would make a really interesting ground for a drawing. I just wanted to show that um, this can also be done if we prepare the paper in a certain way. Here with gelatin size that's been tinted with uh, pigments. And gelatin size is um, not water soluble, so the color is going to stay there. And we can do the same process that we went through before. I'm working on top of mixed media paper here. And mixed media paper, it stands up well to water. 
um, without doing a whole lot of buckling. And I'm just folding and cutting it apart. So like this mixed media paper, it's good for working on top of with, you know, watercolors, uh, gouaches, inks, um, things like that. I'm using a little bit of uh, acrylic here, um, watered down with a bit of water. I'll just say for what it's worth, I should have worn gloves um, because I kind of found myself coming back and reestablishing the folds as, as I was going along. So the other important thing here though is, um, yes, we have a 3D shape to work on top of, but look at how it immediately engages light. And that's one of the sort of aspects of good installation is that it engages light and shadow. 